In this video, we're gonna show one of the best ways to get more pounds out of your grow room. Trellis netting, also known as scrogging, is an amazing way to spread out your plants to produce the most colas and biggest buds. How and when you net is crucial for a successful harvest, so stick around for some important tips on the process. Also, only a small percentage of people who watch our videos are actually subscribed, so if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. Welcome to Higher Education, a cannabis grow series brought to you by the team over at TPS Nutrients. Today we'll be prepping our room for flowering by spreading out the canopy as much as possible to ensure we capture the most light during bloom and get the biggest harvest. To accomplish that, we'll be trellis netting or scrogging. Scrog stands for screen of green, and it's an easy and effective canopy management technique. The basic process is to stretch the netting across your canopy surface, then your plants will grow up through the net. Then you can install second and third layers of netting that the branches will grow up into. This process is a form of low stress training and will help you accomplish a couple of things really well. First, we'll use the net to spread out the plants by bending branches under the net so there could be maximum canopy coverage, ensuring no wasted light hits the floor of your grow room. The netting will also support the flowering plants when the buds get heavier and start to tip over. No matter if you grow in a two x four tent or a large grow room, trellis nets are one of the best ways to boost your harvest and make your job easier. One important thing to remember, once you net your plants, you can't move them or take them out of your grow room, so all maintenance has to be done right where the plant sits. That's why the best time to install trellis netting is right before you flip into flowering. You can also net about a week ahead of time to train your plants into all of the gaps. Now onto the supplies. The supplies you'll need are zip ties, a trellis net, and a pair of scissors. Now let's move on to installing the first layer of trellis net. We moved our plants out of the tent since it will be easier to install the trellis net and also easier to film this episode. When you first open a trellis net, it can be a little intimidating thinking about untangling it. Typically, they're knotted somewhere, so it's best to go slow and try and find the knot. It's important to be careful since there's no going back if it gets too tangled. Once you find an end, you can pull it through the knot and that should free one end. And once an end is free, the rest is simply coiled up. We made a bigger coil of the trellis net to make it easier to handle. We don't recommend cutting it before installing since it's hard to know exactly how much you'll need. The net will be stretched tight as you install it so it's hard to estimate the exact length. Let's carefully bring the net over to the tent. Next, grab the end of the trellis net and locate the corner of the net. You'll want to cinch it to the corner pole with a zip tie. For now, you don't need to go super tight. It's important to leave it loose so you can cinch it tighter later on if needed and easily slide it up and down. Next, head over to the middle pole and stretch the net so it's decently tight. Then cinch the net with a zip tie. Now do the same thing in the next corner and stretch the net so it's fairly tight. When we bring the net across to the opposing side, it's important to follow the trellis squares so that they're in a straight line. This will help you see which part of the net you should secure to the post. Here you can see all these squares lining up. After we secure this corner with a zip tie, we can cut the end off. Next, we place the remaining net on the ground and we can come back for that later. Next, for the middle bar, double check that the squares line up in both directions to make sure the net is evenly installed. Also, if you end up zip tying the wrong square, just know you can always cut the zip tie off and fix it. Your net may have some obstacles as you install it, like dehumidifiers, fans, and like this Wi-Fi camera on a tripod. We're simply gonna put the net around the camera, so that one is easy to take care of. With the dehumidifier, we're gonna cut out a section of netting so as we lower the net, it can simply go around the dehu. Next, we're gonna cut off excess on the front of the net. When we make it back, we're nice and careful so we can save the rest of the net for a second layer that we'll be adding later on. We make a nice big loop and tie the end into a knot. Then we twist up the trellis net and tie it all into one big knot, perfect for storage. And here is the trellis net installed and ready for plants. It's good to have it nice and tight, but it doesn't have to be overly tightened to be effective. But tighter nets are easier to manage. Once the netting is installed and the plants are in place, it's hard to make changes to equipment. So we're gonna make some adjustments before the plants go back in. These are the lower level fans and we'll be raising them up a bit. 
We also raised the upper canopy fans so that we could install the netting. Proper airflow has so many benefits from pest management to transpiration and humidity control. Now we place the drip trays back in the tent and bring the plants back in. Here you can see that we installed the net a little high so that it gave the plants plenty of vertical space to be put back into the tent. Before we move into the important steps on scrogging, check out how strong these stems look. These plants are about six to seven weeks old and the stems are about the size of your thumb. This is really good for water and mineral transport for bloom. This strain, gelato cake, has been incredibly vigorous since day one. Now that all the plants are back in the tent, we're gonna open up the back access doors so we can lower the trellis net and put it into position. The net will be lowered into position in a multi-step process. On this install, we're gonna walk in a circle from one pole to the next, lowering the net a few inches per drop. On the first drop of the trellis net, you should lower it down to just below the top of the canopy. Don't press the net down too hard at this stage or else you may risk hurting the plants. Also, if there are some tops that are clearly gonna be in the way of the net, it's a good idea to move them to the side when lowering the trellis net. We also ended up needing to cut a hole in the net in order to position it around the humidifier. After a couple rounds of lowering and adjusting the net, it's time to begin filling in the gaps with branches. The goal here is to look for gaps in the canopy, like over here, and spread the plant's branches out to fill those gaps, creating a more complete canopy or screen of green. So we're gonna move these branches over to fill in the gaps in the middle. Notice this tall branch here. There's nothing in the square next to it, so we're gonna weave it under. You can also use a branch to catch onto the net and hold it down so the canopy height is more even. The goal is to spread out the plants as much as possible. This one will move over here, and this one we can take around the back and it will grow up here. You can also see this gap in the middle is still here, so we're gonna weave plants under the net to fill that space. As you spread out the plants, you can keep gently lowering the trellis net. Earlier we mentioned multiple layers. This is the first layer of trellis net. As your plants grow, you'll want to install a second and maybe third layer to catch and support the new growth. Overall, with the number of plants we have, the goal is to get at least one branch in every square. This will encourage a nice even canopy with lots of colas. Let's watch a couple more examples of filling in gaps and spreading out the canopy. And now you can see the mangled mess. It's completely normal for your plants to look like a vicious windstorm came through. Don't worry about that at all. We're gonna give the plants a foliar spray with Canopy Boost by TPS Nutrients and we'll come back tomorrow to check on their recovery. Now 24 hours have passed and the plants are looking great. They went from looking like this to looking like this. The tops have all turned up towards the light. You can feel free to bend a couple more times depending on how your canopy looks. Check out our other video on flipping the flower for some best tips on changing your plant's light cycle. Thanks so much for checking out this episode. Our team at TPS Nutrients has lots more on the way, so make sure you subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode of Higher Education.